By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a match for you from the online Dutch old school league, Odol. And in this league, I am playing against Anna. This is the group stages. He is playing with a troll disco deck. And I mean, this is a spicy troll disco deck. This is power all the way. I've got a deck picture. So if you stick around for the deck deck, uh, you'll definitely see the deck picture. And it could be interested as, uh, interesting, especially if you like troll disco brews. Now I am playing with my mono blue deck. I'm playing with Timmy's Spellbook. And I also have a picture of the latest version of the Timmy's Spellbook deck. And uh, I made some changes, so I'm really looking forward to see how they are going to work out against this deck of Anna. Now, if you want to go straight to the games, no worries. Check the description below. There you will find a timestamp. Click on the timestamp and it'll take you straight to game number one. And here we're going to continue with the deck deck. And I'm going to dive into Anna's Brew today into the Troll Disco deck. And here we see Anna's deck. And um, just like every Troll Disco deck, we see, of course, four Neverworld discs and four Sedge Trolls. But besides that, we see a lot of counter magic in this Troll Disco variant. Uh, four counter spells, we see uh, the mana drain, and just in general, I mean, look at the cards. It's the restricted power nine Valhalla, this deck. So it's, um, it is very strong, and I'm thinking it's going to be, uh, it's gonna, definitely going to be a tough matchup for me. He has a lot of answers here. He can counter, but he's of course also has the swords to plows here. He's got the disintegrate, which I think is a great inclusion just to finish a game, uh, you know, late game, just playing a really big disintegrate, because this looks like a game where you can just drag it on. It, it, I think it's going to be very grindy if it's up to um, if it's up to Anna here, especially with those four Neverneurals discs, because basically what a Neverneurals disc does, it, it resets the entire board, so you can just start all over again. Um, and then let's look at the sideboard. Interesting here are the two Maze of Ifs, and of course he's also playing with City in a bottle, but he's playing them on the sideboard. I'm actually playing them main, so I think those are going to be two pretty much dead cards in my deck. On the other hand, what I always kind of say to myself with City in the Bottles, at least they work against my opponent's uh, Arabian Knight lands. Since most uh, people, especially Anna with a deck like this playing four colors, he's going to play with City of Brasses and of course with uh, Library of Alexandria. So yeah, overall, this is going to, looks like a very controlling deck, a very grindy deck. I, I feel that maybe he's going to win a game or two with his um, uh, Mishra's Factories and perhaps in combination uh, with a uh, big disintegrate at the end, you know, that that's the way I, I, I could see him win here. Um, okay, so this is the deck of Anna. Let's take a look at my brew. Let's take a look at Timmy's uh, Spellbook. And here we see my mono blue deck, Timmy's Spellbook. And of course, I'm calling it mono blue, but it's actually blue brown. A lot of artifacts in his deck. You can see three icy manipulators here. Um, this deck has a lot of control variants. So, in that perspective, it is pretty similar to the Disco Troll deck. They're both two control decks that want to kind of drag the game uh, into mid-game, late-game. And I think what's going to be interesting is to kind of see how we are going to use our counter spells because I'm also playing with five counter spells. Uh, Alna is playing with five counter spells. So I think the counter spells might play a crucial role in here. Um, also, Tempo could play an important role if I can go quick enough, you know, maybe a well-timed mana drain into something big, or if I can control the board with my IC manipulators, play some copy artifacts over the IC manipulators, I kind of see options there, but it's definitely going to be tricky. I'm playing against a really good deck. Um, talking about, um, this is the latest version of Timmy Talk, so maybe it's interesting to talk about a few changes that I've made. I first played with three clones. I've taken out a clone. Um, I've also taken out the time elemental, unfortunately. I was a big fan, Bjorn, I'm sorry, but I took out the Time Elemental. And I've took those two creatures out and I've put two new creatures in. I've put two ghost ships into the brew. Um, what I've done as well is I've taken two Maze of Ifs out and moved them to the sideboard. And I've uh, put two Psyblasts in the deck. Now, there are multiple reasons for me to do that. First, I really like the synergy between Psyblast and, and uh, Protocol Sorcerer because I can then deal five damage to a creature. So I can, for example, kill an uh, Urnum Jinn if it hits the table. Um, something else that I noticed is that Maze of If is, is great and it works really well with a Timmy because 
you want to keep your your the creatures of your opponent at bay and mace of if is a great way to do that and at the same time kind of slowly pin your opponent uh to death but one of the things that i've noticed is that mace of if takes a land drop and with this deck i usually want to keep some mana up to or to counter something so i want to keep two blue up or i want to use my icy or i want to use one of my books i'm playing with two uh jam day tomes to draw some extra cards so overall my deck is, I wouldn't say mana hungry, but I I was always looking for that extra mana. And um, I just noticed that the Maze of Ifs weren't really helping in that in that department. So what I'm hoping for is that the, the two side Blasts, if need be, I can use them as creature removal. So that's basically what the Maze of If was there for anyway. And if I'm not going to use them for that, then I can use them just to uh, deal some direct damage to my opponent to kind of finish the game. Uh, at the end so i kind of feel it's an improvement but we'll just we'll just have to see so this is the deck um that i'm playing with today and also oh the sideboard interesting i've put in two steel artifacts in the sideboard so hopefully i can use them maybe to steal one of those discs from my opponent that would be that would be really fun let's hope that that happens you know what let's go to game number one and um and see how this is going to unfold Game number one, and we have Anna sitting on the left with a Stroll Disco deck, and I'm sitting on the right with my Mono Blue Timmy deck. Let's see what I can do, and I believe I'm on the player starting with a basic island and passing turn here, and there we go. Anna, what is he going to do? Playing a City of Brass, and this could be really long matches because we both have pretty grindy decks here playing a Mishra's Factory. Look at that Soul Ring. This is pretty nice. Tapping, boom, Protocol Sorcerer on the board. So there is a Timmy turn number two. That's what I want to do. So I can already start pinging. And no, I, for a moment there, I thought Anna was going to play a Swords to Plows here. Decides not to pass his turn here, plays a Volcanic Island. And look at that, there is a Chaos Orb. Pretty good start, am I going to use it? I guess I'm not. Playing a second City of Brass. Pinging him for one on the end step, so he goes to 19. Playing a Maze of If here. And ooh, this is a little mistake, because I'm passing turn. I should have attacked Anna with the Timmy and then used the Maze of If to untap him after damage is dealt. But let's look what's going to happen next here. We see a set troll, but a quick counterspell. Good news for me. Any ping going to 17. Let's hope I can remember to attack this turn. Because then I can do double damage. Oh, interesting here. Copy artifact. Still one colorless mana floating. And Anna is allowing it. Playing another copy artifact. That means I now have three Chaos Orbs. Again, I'm forgetting to attack. I'm probably too much... Um, mixed up in the decision making with the um, chaos orbs but this is a bit of a misplay on my part i've already i could have dealt him two damage more and it might seem insignificant but with these grindy matches i think all the damage really matters now i'm playing another protocol sorcerer but a counter spell here from anna and now i can actually use my chaos orb to flip on the set troll but i'm deciding not to i i think this is another mistake i think in response i should have flipped on the set troll here but okay i'm not doing it oh and a chaos orb here from anna he's got a beautiful black border deck by the way and um wow this game is getting really interesting and now he wants to activate it and in response i'm actually going to activate it i guess to protect my timmy so i'm going to flip thinking i'm just going to trade chaos orb for chaos orb which is fine by me there we go. Oh, it's a miss. Oh, man. Oh, man. I need to take my time to do these things. Oh, okay, it's a miss. And that means I can flip again in response. But it's already a very lousy trade for me here. And I'm thinking maybe it would have been better to just let on the flip. But I guess now that I'm committed, I'm deciding just to go and flip again. So I'm all still doing this in response to Anna's activation of his Chaos Orb. So I'm flipping on the Chaos Orb. Now let's hope that this one hits. And boom! At least this is a hit. 
And I mean, that's the thing with Chaos Orbs. It's, it's a fantastic card, but every now and then you miss a flip and that's just very, very sour. There we see a Swords to Plows here. So of course, that means at least I can ping him for one and he 2k damage from playing the Swords. Now he's probably, no, he's not gonna attack me because I have that Maze of If still to protect me. Tapping four here, casting a Control Magic on the Setch Troll. And is he going to maybe sort his own troll in response? That's exactly what he's going to do. So that's okay by me. That means it's just removal. And I'm gonna attack him for two because he's got no mana left. And I believe my hand is empty at the moment. And of course, now I am remembering the trick with the Maze of If, but it's not very relevant anymore. Anyway, Anna's on 12, playing a Setch Troll. Pretty good move by Anna here. And can I play an Air Elemental? That's great. One of my flyers here. Pretty happy with that. Let's hope it can stick to the board. On only two cards remaining. Ooh, look at that. It's a Sheevan Dragon. Of course I can flip on the dragon here. And I guess that's what I'm going to do. So let's put in slow-mo. And here we go. Oh, it's another miss. Uh, okay. So out of the, yeah, I'm gonna do it again, but it's not gonna count, but okay. Another miss. So out of the three flips with Chaos Orbs, I've had one hit. That is not great. So at least I still have the maze, I guess. And there is the Neverneurals disc here from Anna. And I'm gonna I'm countering this one. This kind of surprises me, to be honest. He's actually countering my counter spell. And I'm okay with that. He's going to eight. Ah, oh, man. I mean, if I would have just hit that Sheevan, life would have been much more easy. And now we're just in kind of in top decking mode here. I've got that Maze of If, of course. Uh, what am I going to do here? Okay, I'm playing an Icy. Tapping the Sheevan, attacking him here for four, kind of forcing his hand to use his Neverneurals Disc. But he can regenerate, of course, his Setch Troll. So I think, I think, I, I can understand my reasoning for playing out that Icy Manipulator. And look at this, finding a book. This can be pretty decisive here. That book can give me card advantage. And at least I'm still on 21, so I don't really have to fear a big disintegrate. And drawing card here, passing turn. I think maybe the book's gonna pull this one over for me. I'm not there yet, of course. And casting a Sage of Latinam, passing turn here. One card in hand, still showing it to him. And end step. I'm a okay. End step. What's happening here? End step. I'm activating the book, and then in response, uh, on this plays a disenchant. So I've lost the book, but I'm drawing into a new book pretty quickly. And now, of course, my sage doesn't have summoning sickness anymore. So if he just disenchants it again, at least I can get a card out of it. If he can find another one, I mean, Anna knows how decisive this disenchant can be. Not sure if playing out this island is smart. I do have a Loa on the board, so if I can get that Loa to activate, what is he gonna do now? Playing four, playing his own book, can I counter? Playing a time walk here. Ay ay ay, look at on a go here, having his own book and that extra turn. Maybe he's gonna get back into this game. Drawing another card here. And playing a demonic tutor, so he's, he's pulling out all the stops here and uh, probably gonna look for an ancestral recall to draw three more cards and I mean that could just give him the advantage that he needs or maybe I am missing something and he's gonna play out something else no there's the ancestral recall going to draw three here and check he's got two city of brasses untapped for possible counter spells for my next turn playing out a library of Alexandria of his own here I mean, he's done a lot, but it's not too bad. Things are still looking kind of okay for me. And then if you consider that I've missed two flips this first game, ay, 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 ay. 
Let's see what else I can do. Tapping four here. First to draw a card. Still having three blue open and that Mishra's Factory. I mean, he's on eight. I'm, I do have Psyblasts in my deck, two of them. Maybe I can dig for them. Tapping three here, and there is a Prodigal Sorcerer, a Timmy. That does mean that I can no longer counter anything. So Ana kind of has this turn where he can do whatever he wants. He doesn't have to worry about any counter magic from my part. Tapping four here. First, he's going to play a Nevenerals Disc. Interesting, because he's got quite a lot on the board himself as well. Maybe he's going to draw one card with his Tome and then he's going to blow everything up. That's definitely a possibility. Am I tapping four? Oh, I'm tapping four for Control Magic. And what is he going to do? So I'm going to take over his Setch Troll. That means that I can attack him now for two. Counterspell. And of course I can attack him for a lot more because I've got two Mishra's Factories. But he's played a Counterspell so it doesn't matter anymore. Again, I feel like I can play a little bit more aggressively also because I have that maze so I can I can kind of see okay which um, creature are you going to block and then just maze it. So I I, I feel I feel I, I, I can do more. I can deal more damage to honor than what I'm currently doing. Um, tapping for four here, drawing that extra card. I am expecting him to kind of use his disc any moment. Then again, he's probably waiting until it's my turn. Playing a Tundra here, another land, more than enough lands, and what is he going to do? Of course I can ping him and step, and I can draw a card here, so that's pretty good. And there he goes with the Disenchant, but actually I don't mind that much because I get a card out of it, and I draw an extra card with the Sage of Latinam. So basically I get two cards, and he loses his Disenchant, so it's not too bad for me. He's on seven. He's got that active disc. I'm tapping four here, playing a ghost ship. And ghost ship, of course, I can regenerate for three blue, so it works fantastically against those discs. What else am I going to do here? Playing a strip mine. And passing turn, it seems. And I think Anna will definitely want to untap with his book. To have an option for another card. He's not going to activate his disc before that. So he's going to draw a card here. Is he going to activate the disc now? It's a diff difficult situation. Um, the thing is I have Ghost Ship. Ghost Ship has flying so I can deal two damage with Ghost Ship. I can ping him for one at the end step that he goes to six. So I can kind of, I think I can kind of force his hand next turn. Then again, do I want to animate my Mishra's factories and having the risk that I'm going to lose my factories to his disc? I don't think that's a good trade. I think I just have to be patient. Putting him on six now with the Protocol Sorcerer. Let's see what I'm going to do here. I mean, swinging in with the Ghost Ship is kind of a no-brainer here. Bringing him down to four, that is, or not. It seems like Anna maybe wants to do something still. And... He's actually going to activate his disc. And that means I can ping him one more time. I'm going to regenerate my ghost ship. And he just, just to clarify, I probably said I want to go into, uh, into my attack phase. And he said before you go into your combat phase, I'm going to activate the Never Neural's disc. I think that's kind of what happened here. Look at that, another Timmy. I love seeing all these Timmies hit the board. Um, Anna on five here. I mean, he's he needs something against the ghost ship first. I think that's his biggest threat at the moment. But also, don't forget, I've got the strip mine to deal with his factory. And then I have quite, I think I've got two Mishra's factories I can use to attack. And he will only have one Setch Troll to block if I take care of his Mishra's factory. So he base ideally he could he would play a swords over the ghost ship and then also play a blocker. Let's see what he can do here. Tapping for three, playing a mind twist, taking care of my clone and my Vesuvian double ganger. And now it's my turn. 
then I think I just should strip. Yeah, I'm going to strip his factory. He's only got one blocker. I just attack with two and the ship. And I think that's game. So I'm going to take that back. That means that I'm just going to deal five damage that way. Untapping the factory, uh, using it to pump the other factory. And that's it. So despite my missed orbs, this Despite the fact that I missed a couple of opportunities to deal extra damage with uh, Ana, for example, uh, with that Maze of If in the early game, I still managed to win this one. Game number one is for me, but now we are going to our sideboards and I will get back to you in game number two. Game number two. So we've got Ana on the play. Let's see if I can uh, win the second game, win the match. But look at that start from Ana here, a library of Alexandria. And so I tell you a little secret, I made a decision and the decision that I made was to board out my city in the bottles. And what does he do turn one? Library of Alexandria. So that is already a tough start for me here. I've got two basic islands I see. And of course, uh, Ana is just drawing cards like there's no tomorrow, passing turn here, playing a soul ring after having cast that Mishra's factory. And pass turn. I've got two blue open to counter. Let's see what he's got in store for me. And look at him drawing cards here. Uh, after playing a Mishra's, uh, sorry, a Maze of If, he's now also playing a Mox Jet, drawing a card, passing turn. Tapping three here, playing a Protocol Sorcerer. Let's see if uh, Ana allows it. Looks like he does. Playing a City of Brass, drawing another extra card. And there seems to be a glitch. Yeah, he's playing a Swords to Plowsiers here. But I am playing a Mana Drain. And there is a red, or sorry, a, yeah, a red Elemental Blast to counter that blue spell. And of course, that's after sideboarding. I have to deal with those red Elemental Blasts. I can tell you that's really, really tough as a blue mage to deal with that card. And playing here a JM Day Tome. So hopefully I get to draw some extra cards as well. And Anna is really getting a lot of cards from his library of Alexandria. And hopefully I Ooh, there's a counter spell on the disenchant, but another red elemental blast. And this is bad news for me. I really need it to keep that book around to kind of get some card advantage back, but it's just not working out for me. Tapping six here. Okay, playing a Brain Geyser. Let's see if he allows this. So he allows this to happen. So at least I get to draw, I believe, five more cards. So that's actually quite a lot. So maybe this can get me back into the game. Hopefully I can find my strip mine here to take care of the Library of Alexandria. And look at that. Anna just keeps drawing cards there from his Loa. And what else is he going to do? Now, I remember this. We had a little glitch up. So um, as you can see, there's a little glitch on the camera. What has happened in between? He stepped his mana to cast a set troll. And remember, I'm still tapped out from the brain geyser. So there's not much that I can do. And look at that playing a strip mine, the card that I am actually looking for. What can I do? Tapping four more and we see a ghost ship. And I wonder if Anna is going to counter this. It looks like he's not. And what am I going to do? Just passing turn here. At least I've still got four cards in hand. It's not too bad. But look at Anna go there drawing an extra card again. So he's got eight cards in his hand right now. Tapping two here for a terror. Wow, beautiful card. That came in from his sideboard. And of course that works perfectly against those ghost ships. So that is a very good inclusion here from Anna. And of course he takes care of my Maze of If with his strip line and swings in here for the damage, for three damage, going to 18, because I earlier took a life um, from the Swords to Plowsiers for the Protocol Sorcerer. Playing a Icy Manipulator and a new Protocol Sorcerer. So at least, you know, considering I'm playing against a lower turn one, I think I think I'm doing OK. You know, who knows? Maybe I can still win this one. I mean, there's there's a small chance, but who knows? I'm still in the game. I'm on 18. I've got two cards in hand. Let's see what Ana is going to do. Playing a Black Lotus, cracking the Lotus. And playing a disc. 
what am I going to do? Maybe end step tap his set troll. And then next turn tap his maze of if so I can attack with a few creatures. Yeah, tapping his set troll, untapping everything here. Playing an island. The problem is I'm kind of running out of gas. After the Brain Geyser, I had quite a lot of plays left, but now I'm running out of gas. Activating my Mishra's Factory and tapping his maze so I can swing in for two, dealing two more damage. So he's going to drop to 17. I don't think he's going to be really impressed by that. Using the Loa, of course, again. So he's go back to eight. Plays a card, got still seven in hand. And of course, the Loa just provides Ana with a constant card flow. And the card advantage is going to give him the game eventually. Attacking now first, taking the damage. Going from 18 to 15 here, taking three damage from the Satch Troll. Of course, I can ping him for one, and that's what I'm going to do upon the activation of the Neveneral's Disc. And that means he's going to drop to 16. But it's looking really, really good here for Anna. All he has to do is just take advantage from his Loa. I've got three cards in hand. Passing turn here. Uh, he's going to play his card. Probably going to draw an extra card here. He's going to attack. Going to take the damage. Going to go down to 12. Going to take an extra card here. And just play out another card. Another Satch Troll perhaps. Yes, another Satch Troll. And I'm playing a Blue Elemental Blast this time. Taking care of the Satch Troll. And tapping six here and playing a Mahamoti Jin. Ay, 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 a counter spell. And that's, of course, the problem with uh, when you're playing against an opponent who's simply drawing an extra card every turn. He's got answers to everything. Now, I do believe maybe he now only has six in hand because he had to play out that counter spell. But I mean, he's still got the set draw. I'm on nine. Uh, look at that he did have enough cards drawing an extra card here playing another tim i mean i'm not drawing bad or anything but it's just really tough to play against a set troll and i believe i'm actually cloning my own protocol sorcerer here because copying the set troll isn't a lot of help you know it, it's just a 2-2 on my side of the board and i cannot regenerate it so swinging in going to six here And tapping three, what is he going to do? Playing another Satch Troll. And since he's using his Loa for mana here, I'm pretty sure he's got a plan. That's not a coincidence that he does that. He's actually discarding a card. He's got too many cards here, discarding his Neveneral's Disc. What a luxury that man has. And I'm playing an Air Elemental and we're probably gonna see a Counterspell. There it is already, Counterspell of the Air Elemental. Playing a Copy Artifact over my Mistress Factory just because I can. Um, I mean, I know that it's going to be really, really tough. I'm on six life, I need my blockers here. It's probably gonna attack with both of the Setch Trolls. And I'm probably going to block and just ping him for two then. Let's see what's going to happen. First I'm going to attack. Going to block one and ping. That means I'm going to three life here. And he's going to play Demonic Tutor, of course. To make matters even worse. He's going to take damage. And there it is. Disintegrate for the win. Game number two. Very convincing to Ana. And, you know, I just, isn't this magic sometimes? You choose to board out your city of, Bra uh, sorry, your city in a bottle because you're like, he's not playing with a lot of Arabian Nights. And what happens? Loa turn one. Anyway, uh, well done, Anna. You've won this one, 1-1. One, one. That means we're going to go into game number three. Game number three. At least I get to start. It's a 1-1. One, one. And uh, let's see. Let's see what I can do here. I'm playing a basic island. And look at that nice start here from Anna with an underground sea and a Mox Ruby. Finding my second island. And there's a Maze of If from Anna. And we're just dropping our lands. Passing turn here. Volcanic Island. 
And uh, I just want to keep two blue up, of course, to counter. And we're both pretty much counters uh, players. And look at that, I'm missing a land drop here. So that could have some influence playing a blue elemental blast over the Sedge Troll, playing another land. So I, at least I found some land again, passing turn here. And there's another Sedge Troll. Will there be another counter spell? There is a mana drain. That means that I'm getting uh, three extra mana. And there's the dice indicating that in the next main phase, can I play something big with that? Now remember, there is no mana burn in Swedish, so you don't have to use it. Look at that playing a icy manipulator passing turn here. So that's good news for me. Another Satch Troll. There is a counter spell. So it looks like I have all the answers here. Tapping down the Maze of If. And, ooh, interesting here. I'm choosing not to attack. Instead, I go for more control. I'm going to uh, copy Artifact, my Icy Manipulator passing turn here. And this is always difficult because now I have to decide, am I going to tap down his lands in his upkeep before he draws, or am I going to allow him to uh, continue? Ooh, Counterspell here. So that's a well-timed Counterspell. Let's see what I can do. I'm going to... Interesting, because I have enough land to tap down his mace and to deal damage here. I'm actually choose. looks like I'm choosing not to. Playing a Timmy instead Protocol Sorcerer. That makes sense in a way, I guess. Passing turn here. And now am I choosing to tap down his lands? So this is a choice I have to make. And I'm choosing to tap down his lands in his... Uh, upkeep, so that means before his draw step, so now he's, he's drawn a card and now he's going into his first main phase and he's not doing anything, just passing turn here. And I'm playing a mace myself, passing turn, again I'm going to tap those lands, so I'm not choosing to attack, finding another mock, so I mean he's got quite a lot of mana himself, pinging him for one, going down to 19. I could of course also choose to tap the maze of if, but instead I choose to keep doing this. I want to go full in control, keep my lands open to counter if I need to counter anything. There is a disenchant. Do I have a counter spell? I do not. Interesting. Maybe I should play a little bit more aggressive in this stage. And what am I going to do? Am I going to tap down his maze now? And put some damage on the board. I mean, only still on 17, paying f four here and playing another Icy Manipulator, but we see a Mana Drain. Wow, well done here. And am I going to counter the Mana Drain? It l no, I'm not. Ooh, playing a City in a Bottle. That means he's losing a City of Brass. Passing turn here. Interesting. Why not keep two blue open to at least give my opponent the idea that I can counter? Instead, I choose to play the city, take care of a city of brass, kind of want to attack his mana base that way. But he has so much mana and he has all the colors that he need as well. But he, I mean... He doesn't have much on the board. I, I can ping him at the end, I guess. So it's not necessarily bad for me, this situation. Let's see what he's going to do here. Of course, he still has that Lance from his Demonic Tutor and ooh, what is he going to do? He has so many powerful cards in his deck. But he chooses to go for the Ancestral Recall. Makes sense. There's a reason that everybody does it. And that's probably because it's one of the best things to do in most of the circumstances. So drawing three from the Ancestral Recall. That kind of can get him back into the game. Look at that. Another Mace of If. So even with my one Icy Manipulator, it's simply not enough. And now he's passing turn, taking the turn here. Tapping a blue one. There is a Soul Ring.
what can I do here? Tapping four, oh, five actually playing an air elemental, but there is the red elemental blast. And you can see how incredibly strong those red elemental blasts have been. In game number two, they were very decisive. And also in, uh, in game number three, again, they're very valuable here for Anna. Pinging him, tapping down one of his maces, probably gonna tap down his second mace and swing in for four here. That's exactly what I'm doing. Swinging in for four. But this little trick only works also swinging in with the Timmy. And finally, I'm using the Mace of If in a way that it makes sense. Because now I can do double damage with that Protocol Sorcerer. And that's something that I didn't do in game one. Ooh, look at that. There's a Stone Rain on one of my Mishra's factories. Also pinging him. So he's now on nine counter spell on the air elemental yeah it's just very 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 difficult to get anything anything done here Ooh, taking care of my timmy i'm able to ping him though he's going to eight remember if i tap one of his maces next turn tap the other mace at least i can attack him for two if he doesn't play anything uh a disenchant or swords or whatever on my factory he's not that means he's going to drop to six Will I be able to do anything? Oh, look at that. He's playing a Mishra's Factory of his own. That is pretty problematic because that means that I can no longer deal any damage with my mace. Tapping one of his maces. Only two cards in hand now. And uh, actually, am I going to do something? Tapping his mace, attacking. I'm probably attacking the... Ooh! disenchant on the mistress factory that is tough i wanted to say i'm attacking because um his mistress factory of honor still had summoning sickness and attacking now untapping him with the mace so i'm on 21 Anna is on six the problem here is can i actually get through for that final six points of damage And I actually believe that I boarded in the maze of ifs against Anna extra ones to deal with his set trolls. And I think I boarded out the Psy Blasts and I'm really regretting that now. And I think overall when I look back at my own uh, sideboard decisions that I've made over the course of this matchup, they've been uh, very unfortunate for me. And okay, this is good playing a jam day tome. That means that I can start drawing some cards and maybe that can, I playing a disenchant, at least I can still use it once to draw a card off of it. So it's not too bad of a trade here, but it's not great either. And what can I do? Playing another protocol sorcerer here. Remember he's on six. So maybe that can give me the victory if I can then find clones or whatnot but he's playing a quick swords to plowsiers and maybe you know what maybe we're gonna he's gonna deck me or i'm gonna deck him i mean if we look at both of the libraries they're getting pretty thin here look at that another ic manipulator and actually i wish at this stage that anna still had a city of brass because i could tap the city of brass with the IC manipulators and that way deal damage to Anna. But I guess it's not gonna happen. And can I find something? Finding a ghost ship. Let's hope that I can get it to stick because now I've got the double IC to tap down his maze of if. So hopefully I can deal some damage next turn. There's a counter spell though. Ay -ay -ay. And I don't have any counter spells of my own, it seems. Oh, I'm so close, but so far it's kind of like we're, we're tight here. Who is going to win this? I mean, I'm on 22, but does that really matter? I mean, look at my library. It's going really down, and I, this is what you don't want to happen. So what happened here? I'm playing my Protocol Sorcerer, and I'm choosing to take the risk. I remember this play, to play a clone over it. I felt like I had to risk it at this stage of the game. Unfortunately for me... Anna had that swords ready. He had the right card at the right time. That means that I'm not only losing my 
protocol sorcerer i'm also losing my clone because there was no legal target anymore on the board and um you know these games are just very very grindy very very difficult and um i don't regret making the decision because it was a conscious decision i knew this was a risk but considering the amount of swords that Anna already played out and the amount of, of um, red elemental blasts, I kind of felt that I could do it. And look at this, playing a Chaos Orb on my City of Brass. Or sorry, on my City in a Bottle, I mean. I kind of wonder why he does that. Maybe he has some kind of Arabian Nights card that he wants to play out. Aloha, okay, okay. That makes sense. So that's why he took care of it. Ooh, Time Elemental taking an extra turn. Where is this going to? Tapping, what is he gonna do? I mean, Anna has a plan. I know Anna is a good player. He must have a plan here. I actually don't really mind him drawing cards with his Library of Alexandria because he's getting pretty low on cards himself. So maybe this is just going to be one of those situations where he kind of mills himself to death. On the other hand, I know Anna, I've played against him a lot. He's he's one of those players that, that does things for a reason. He kind of thinks ahead. So that kind of worries me as well. And I'm keeping a Counterspell in hand, by the way, to deal with his Disintegrate because I saw the Disintegrate in game two. So I'm keeping a Counterspell behind to deal with the Disintegrate here using my Strip Mine to take care of his Library of Alexandria. And there we see a Disenchant over one of my Icy Manipulators. And this game is really a thriller. Now remember, this is game number three. Whoever's going to win this one is wins the match. And... Uh, What is going to happen next here? Drawing a card. But I don't think there's much left in my library that can still kind of get me the victory. I wish I didn't board out my side blasts for those Maze of Ifs, but I did. There's no turning back now. Taking care of my Loa here. And finding a Mishra's Factory, but I can't really do anything with that. I'm, I'm staring down at two Maze of Ifs and two Mishra's Factories myself. And it looks like Anna is also going through his library, trying to look at what he still has in his deck to get out of this standstill. Playing a Chaos Orb of myself. And strangely enough, in this in this stage of the game, it doesn't really matter a Chaos Orb. It's not really going to, to matter a lot. Yes, I can take care of a Maze of If, but or, or or something else, but does that really matter that much? And you can see Anna going through his library again. He he's making plans over there, and that kind of worries me. And all I'm doing is just playing more and more lands and probably having one or two counter spells in hand to take care of that Disintegrate, because that's all I can really think about. Is he going to kill me with the Disintegrate? And who has more cards in their library still? Is it me or is it Anna? That's, of course, another interesting question at this stage of the game. Playing a Satch Troll. I don't really mind. I've got two Maze of Ifs. I've got an Icy Manipulator, and I've got a Chaos Orb. So I don't really mind the Satch Troll playing another Island. Let's see, what is he going to do? Playing a Neverneurl's Disc. Again, I don't really mind. He can activate it. Oh, I'm actually going to flip on it? Interesting. So I'm flipping on it, hitting it. I mean, I guess I want to protect my IC Manipulator. And look at that, playing another ghost ship. Ooh, playing a terror. He still had that terror. And where are my counter spells? Or don't I want to play out my counter spells? Then again, you know, the ghost ship wouldn't even have mattered that much because Anna has got three mazes of if. So, and there is another 
Nevenerals Disc. You know, these cards, they don't really matter much in this stage of the game. Look at that. I also have three Maze of Ifs here on the board. The question is who's going to win this game? Who has more cards in their library? I think that's going to be crucial to decide who's going to win this. And if we look at the board state, it's pretty much insane. And now when I think back of the early stages of the game where I really had full control, and I'm talking about this game, game number three, I really should have played more aggressive. Maybe just push some more damage in. Because now he's stuck on six and I don't really, I don't really see a way out of here except maybe trying, um, trying to get Anna to deck himself. Playing a Tome. Yeah, I'm probably not going to use it to draw cards. Because what can I look for really? And he's going through his graveyard again. I'm counting my cards. <laughs> he's, oh man, I think he's got less cards in his graveyard, so. And remember, this is a fast forwarded game, so you can imagine how long it actually took. Like, there was a lot of, we were in the tank all the time trying to find kind of ways to victory here. I mean, look at those dual lands of Anna, by the way, isn't it just insane? All those black border duels. He's got a playset of volcanic islands, a playset of underground seas, three tundra, two scrublands. It's just beautiful to look at. And okay, it looks like I've played another copy artifact. I'm not quite sure what I copied. Oh, I copied his Nevenerals disc. Interesting. What is he going to do? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, he's playing a brain, guys. Is, is he playing it on me? Countering it? Countering the counter spell. Is this it? Is this the end? Oh, this is it. This is the end. And I'm showing him my brain geyser. Oh, man. Oh, this is... Oh, man. Okay, so just a little recap in case you couldn't follow this ending. This is just insane. Um, he played a Brain Geyser uh, on uh, me. He said, you know, draw X cards. So I would draw my entire library. Then it was my turn. No cards in library and I'm dead. So I tried to counter it by playing a counter spell that I still kept in my hand. You also saw two uh, blue elemental blasts in my hand. I probably had them to take care of the disintegrate uh, and probably just drew into them later in the game. Uh, wow, wow, wow. Anna, well done, well done. You, you found a way out in a situation where I thought, you know, we're just gonna deck and, no, and the person with, with the least cards in their library is going to lose. And that was you actually until you played the Brain Geyser. So well done, excellent, excellent. Uh, we see on this deck here, by the way, on the background, and I can tell you that he did very well in this online tournament. He won all of the three of his group matches, and he continued to, I believe, the top 16 or top 8. Maybe, Anna, you can uh, you can let us know in the comments below how you did. Really nice to see this Troll Disco deck in action. Thank you very much for this game, and thank you for watching. And if you want to support the channel, uh, you can do so by subscribing if you're not a sub yet liking it always helps leave a comment click the notification bell and there is a pop-up showing up right now and that will take you to timmy talks patreon page where you can also support the channel financially um so yeah you can do that talking about patreon and the patrons let's go to the end scroll let's check out the patrons of timmy talks
Ik het als fikker te somber gezien. 